Good morning, chaps. Welcome along to vlog. Uh, Gemma's birthday today, so happy birthday, Gemma. I'm sure everyone will wish her happy birthday in the comments. Um, first job I've got today is uh, after last week's disastrous tipping of a thousand litres of beer due to uh, under attenuation and a slight infection. I'm of course going to double check that this batch before we throw in all those hops which is uh, about a couple of hundred pounds worth of hops frankly before we throw them in we're going to take a sample and we're going to check that all is clear so I've got a bucket of acid down here we've got a little syringe soaking in some persid there as well the acid and we're going to spray up where have I put that spray bottle? Here it is. We're going to spray up the spout, if you like, and make sure that's all sanitised. We're going to draw off a sample of the beer. We're going to have a look at it under the microscope, and we're going to see if it's in good nick or not. So we've got another jug here. What I'm going to do at the same time is take enough of a sample for a hydrometer reading. I'll sit there. A little bit of yeast. So whilst this isn't obviously a hundred percent aseptic process, it's good enough. So we may see a couple of animacules in the sample, but hopefully it should be clear enough for the purposes of checking the health of the beer. So I'm just gonna go and get the I've just been to fetch the syringe. So if I just adjust the angle of the camera We should be able to see what's going on now. So on here, I've got a, uh, what do they call these now? Hemocytometer. So I'm just going to quickly hit that with a flame. And then the same with a cover slit. And there we go. I'm just gonna line this cover slip on to the right position. about right. Now I'm just going to flame the top of it just to make sure there's nothing else in there. Then we're going to take our syringe. We're going to zip out a sample of the beer and then carefully we're just going to fill the there we go, that's one side, and the other side. So we're not doing a yeast count here, so this doesn't have to be completely accurate. But it's good enough for the gills I go out with. And we're going to pop this plate on the microscope, making sure that I've got the lowest magnification on. There we go. And then we're going to zoom in. Turn it on and have a little bit of a peek. I'm going to have to just show you through the eyepiece today because I don't want to run upstairs and plug the microscope in. But we'll have a look when I've had a look. Well, there we are. As luck would have it, there's a massive bubble over the counting section of the uh, of the hemocytometer. But that's not a problem uh, because we're not doing a cell count. So this is at uh, about 10 times mag, I think it is. So we'll zoom in. Maybe this is 40 actually. So we'll zoom in to uh, 400 and have a closer look. Yeah, so the last one was 40 times mag. This is 100. So that big black semicircle on the right hand side you can see there is just a, a bubble. The brown kind of uh, stain thing in the center of the image is actually some protein or tube. And then all around you can see 
loads and loads and loads of yeast cells it's quite difficult to maintain a steady camera here but uh, I'll pop it up to 400 times and we'll have a closer look right so we're here at 400 times magnification and I'm trying to hold as steady as possible you can see all the healthy yeast cells there I did spot one or two little bacteria buzzing around but nothing that's really causing me a lot of concern it's natural to have one or two you're not going to eliminate all of them there in the center you can see that massive patch of protein or true whatever you want to call it and if you look closely at some of the cells you'll see that some of them are connected to other cells that's where they have budded if the other cells are smaller if there's like a little joining line between the two you might have a mother and a daughter cell there particularly if the other cells are a little bit smaller or in some cases it just might be a couple of yeasts a couple of yeast cells getting friendly you know um, I haven't stained this sample so what you're seeing is just what I see in the microscope eyepiece you can stain these with methylene blue to see which cells are dead and which cells are alive and also at this magnification you can just about see the nucleus of the cell which is the darker section in the middle of the cell and that's of course where all of the cells internal organelles are held and uh, internal uh, I don't know if you used to have mitochondria or not I don't know anyway getting a bit technical there so that's the start of my day I'm happy with this it's a healthy yeast population and I'm ready to put the dry hops into the beer and also take a pH measurement to make sure that we're in the right place I want to be below 4.3 and then that also suppresses the reproduction of the bacteria uh, just on a note if you want to have a look for a bacteria you'll see they're considerably smaller than the yeast cells and they're bobbling around a little bit so these cells these bacterial cells when they bobble around they're not swimming in the solution they're being moved around by something called Brownian motion and that is the impact of the molecules around the the bacteria cell moving it around so a good example of one is if you count two cells in from the left about in the center there's a center line running straight through the middle two cells in from the left and just the one above it above that center line you'll see that there's a cell in that square a yeast cell on the right hand side of that square and next to it there's a little tiny black dot that's a bacterial cell and he, you can see, is buzzing around in relation to the yeast cell next to him. In fact, he's heading away from it now. He's just been quite up close. So if you skip the video back and just watch that section, you'll be able to see him bumbling around, a little bit like Boris Johnson, not knowing exactly what he's doing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a type of bacteria. I don't know what type it is. I imagine it won't do us any harm and it probably won't do the beer any harm either because when the pH of this beer drops after it's been conditioned and fermentation is finally complete it'll be a Theresa May style hostile environment for them all so they won't they won't be able to exist or at least won't be able to reproduce in the solution so there we go that's a bit of a close-up of a relatively healthy uh, beer uh, which we're about to dry hop so yeah, as I said, don't be alarmed by the fact that there are a few bacterial cells in there. It's it's almost impossible to eliminate them all. So uh, as long as your practices are good and your hygiene is good, you should be fine. If you see a lot of those though, particularly if you see more bacterial cells than you do yeast cells, then I recommend you need to have another look at your brewing practices to try and reduce those cell counts a little bit more right and now for a special effect I've actually put some immersion oil on the cover slide which is why we're seeing everything move around a little bit more and I've slipped in the hundred times mag lens so what we're seeing here is a hundred a thousand times magnification uh, it's quite difficult to keep everything in shot as you can see so that's as good as it's gonna get I'm afraid but if you look in there, you'll be able to see the cell structure. 
inside the cells you'll be able to see that actually upon closer inspection there are very very few bacterial cells in fact I can't see any in this field so that's a really good sign and then also you'll be able to see a bit, a bit of a closer view on the and what we call them the protein particles in there as well they're the fluffy little bits they're bits of protein and you might also be able to make out some little dots they just look like singular bits of protein like hanging around or oh, is that a bacteria we can see just in, in the bottom left there look interfering with that yeast cell you kind of see that yeast cell buzzing around I think that might be a bacteria I don't know if that's in the sample oh, it must be but it's in a different plane if you know what I mean to the to the bacterial cell difficult to tell but you can see how he's bumbling around a little bit anyway I just thought I'd show you that if you want to pause the video have a closer look I can't really get it in better focus for you because as you can see I'm struggling to hold this but maybe another day we'll set up the camera on the microscope and have a have a, a bit of an exploratory mission into a sample of yeast you know what you want to do, you want to jar the fucker mate, you want to get yourself some sterilised out sell it, fucking sell it. <laughs> don't, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be at it anything mate. It'll not really keep in, in jars. Yeah. Well you can't keep them sealed either, it'll blow jars up. Will it? Because they'll still keep producing CO2. Right, I'll that looks good doesn't it? Fucking awesome. That's really nice and smooth now. There's no bits in there at all. That's a good creamy tackle. It's getting thicker. Just think all that started. Well, that's it, folks. I'm not sure how happy Gemma's going to be because I've actually stayed here until quarter past six I can just sit up there on the clock so we've got that recirculated this has got acid in it at the minute I better turn it off just like that those two tanks are up at um, diacetyl rest and they've had the first charge of dry hops as well Dominic what a dude I better turn this off flashing away and it hasn't burnt out, although that is steaming hot. Anyone know anything about these stepper motor things, these synchronous motors? This one gets really hot for some reason. Yet the one down here, in there, doesn't. I don't know. But the whole machine works, as you can see. It's printing dates on perfectly. So yeah, bit of a hodgepodge vlog today. But at least you've got one. I hope I can edit it. I've got to go home and cook tonight. Maybe it'll go up tomorrow. There's actually one or two already due to go up that I've filmed previously. Anyway, we'll see you later. I'm going to bugger off before I have my testicles removed by uh, Gemma for being home so late. We'll see you later. Cheers. Go on, Stu.